And for more on this, we're joined by TRT World's Azza Sukri, who's in Kuala Lumpur for us. Azza, what more can you tell us about the summit? Well, thanks very much. Yes, it's been the first day of the summit here in Kuala Lumpur. And you're right, technology has been a key focus uh, of the, some of the discussions taking place here. And also, they've been looking at the impact that technology is having on economies and on ordinary lives. Now, technology has the effect of disrupting many industries, and it also has the effect of laying a lot of people off of work. So how are countries and people going to deal with the fallout from technology to help me answer that is Sadia Zahidi, who's the head of the Employment and Gender Initiatives at the World Economic Forum. Sadia, thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World. So if an 18-year-old from Southeast Asia came to you now and asked you for advice on what's the best way to get a job, what would your advice be? You know, this region is going through very similar changes as the rest of the world as the fourth industrial revolution hits business models across across the world. And I would say there are probably two things that are a good bet. One, uh, learn a little bit about STEM and IT, and two, learn how to collaborate with others, the uniquely human traits that are not about machines. At the same time, I think the only constant is change, and perhaps the third skill to acquire is to know how to be adaptable, to take responsibility for your own learning and reskilling throughout your lifetime. Um, so we are also seeing uh, widening disparities uh, because of technological change, uh, not just income disparities, but also gender mm -hmm. uh, inequalities. Uh, Looking across Southeast Asia, where do you see the worst of these uh, and what are the causes of them? So I think the disparities are greater actually by income levels within com countries than they are across these different countries. So for example, women that are in a high-skilled, high-income bracket across the ASEAN region probably have more in common with each other than they do with their fellow country women who are at a very different sort of income and skill level. So I think one of the big investments that's going to have to be made is to ensure that women are getting skilled, particularly in some of the the skill sets that are needed in the future, and that they're going to have access to finance um, for their own entrepreneurial ability uh, to be to be fully realized. Uh, so, in your opinion, uh, briefly, what are the solutions? Education is going to have to be a huge piece of this. So unless there are fundamental reforms to basic foundational education, uh, I think uh, a lot of the predictions around technology and jobs will, the, the negative ones, will come true. If we do make those kinds of investments, I think we could set ourselves up for a world where people learn how to continue to learn and where people are able to continue to find new sources and new opportunities um, for employment. And then, of course, the other big change is more in the short term. There's going to have to be an emphasis on adult learning and reskilling. That is something that is critically needed today. Without that, I don't think we can afford to wait for you know 15 years before a new cohort of people come out of basic education. Sadia Zahidi from the World Economic Forum, thank you very much. Well, that theme that you heard there about adult learning and learning new skills is something that we've been tracking here in Kuala Lumpur, and you'll be seeing a lot more of that a little bit later. Back to you for now. Many thanks for that. Uh, Azar Sukri there for us live in Kuala Lumpur.